drawing clothes is hard with all these confusing folds. Wrong! No, it's actually fairly easy if you follow the couple of tricks that I'll show you in this week's episode of YouTube Art School. I guarantee you that by the end of this class, you'll be at least 500% better at drawing folds or you get your money back. Oh, oh hey, class is starting. All right, class is in session. Pay attention. Drawing clothes is all about understanding folds. If you understand the recipe behind drawing folds, you should technically be able to draw any kind of clothes. There's a couple of things that go into it. Various concepts that we need to understand and juggle to draw aesthetic clothes that will actually help make your characters look better instead of ruining them like is so often the case. It's definitely one of the more frequent areas of troubles for my students. So I'll cover each of the six concepts one at a time in the different chapters of this class. So first, let's take a look at some reference to see what's most important to observe when it comes to folds. Not all references are good. Most aren't. To learn to draw clothes, we're going to start by finding references for things that we'll draw most of the time, like 80% of the time. We'll want to find references for things that are super common across most character drawings. Any guesses? Well, I'm talking about the folds around the shoulders of your characters, the elbows, the wrists, the hips, knees, and ankles. It's also easier to start with references in a neutral pose, like a person who's just standing facing the camera. This wouldn't be a good reference, for example. Because when are you ever going to draw something like that? It's way too hard to make sense of. Our brains love patterns, and it's by finding patterns that we remember things more effectively. So again, focus on finding references for common folds that most characters are likely to share. With a few references in hand, let's see what kind of folds we can observe here. The first thing here maybe is that points of tension play a big part in shaping the folds. This person's knee is clearly pushing against the fabric and as a result, we see a number of folds created, all converging towards that point of tension. The other leg is also interesting though, there doesn't seem to be any clear point of tension, but we still have some visible folds here, all those shaped differently. When the folds present are not due to some tension in the material, I'll usually consider that they're just a result of the force of gravity. Most fabrics aren't, you know, as sturdy as metals or plastic, so they'll usually crumble under their own weight. And as they do, the surface that used to be smooth now has a bunch of ripples, aka folds. With that said though, we don't need to understand any kind of advanced physics theory here. It's all about finding patterns that we can reproduce. One such pattern that I think is important to point out is the fact that most folds take on a triangular structure. With softer fabrics, it won't be as obvious, but with a stiffer fabric like denim, we can spot them everywhere. What's also worth observing here is the shape of those triangles get flatter and flatter the more tension there is, like around the crotch here. or the more weight that they're under, like towards the bottom of the legs where all of this is pushing down on it. When you get these kinds of folds due to gravity, the rhythm will typically increase the closer you get to the ground, as all of the fabric above piles onto the fabric below. It's like, you know, having someone sitting on your shoulders. It's a lot heavier for you than it is for them. If you're at the bottom, you're gonna be squished. Another pattern we can observe is how similar a lot of these folds that form naturally can be. Folds might seem random, but they're not that random. If we look at the fold on her sleeve from the reference, you can see that we have very similar structures here, despite these fabrics being different. And we can actually use this to our advantage. In this third chapter, we'll look at how we can use these patterns that we notice in folds and essentially turn them into fold recipes. Recipes that we'll be able to reuse in a variety of different scenarios. Let's take that fold structure that we noticed on these references. If I were to start a blank sleeve and then just add the same structure on it, quickly I get some very convincing folds. They're simple, granted, but they definitely work. And it works just as well with the arm bent too. Pretty cool. What about the crutch area for any character wearing pants or shorts? In this reference, we have this sort of structure that looks pretty typical. What if I start with a simple shorts drawing and slap on the same kind of fold structure? I don't want symmetry because that looks always fake, but if I change around some of the lines, mm, just a couple of quick brush strokes, and just like that, I have another fold recipe from my imaginary recipe book. 
And hopefully you see the potential here. I can just memorize these few lines and the next time that I have to draw some pants on a character, I'll have that area sorted out already. And if you repeat this process for the more common fold areas, like I mentioned earlier, the, you know, the crutch, the knees, the ankles, the shoulders, elbows, and wrists, well, you should be able to quickly get to a point where you can easily draw most of the folds, like 80% of the time maybe, on any given character. Now, there's a lot to learn when it comes to drawing or painting nice clothes, nice folds, and we're just scratching the surface here. If you like how I teach, though, I just wanted to remind you that my best-selling art program is on sale for just a few more days until the end of the month. It's almost over and it's the biggest discount of the year, so I don't want you to miss out on a crazy deal. This program is everything I wish I had when I was younger. It contains 30 different classes, assignments, plus a detailed week-by-week -week study guide that covers all of the program's content. I've been working on it and updating it for over five years now, and it's the project that I'm most proud of ever. So check it out with the link in the video description if you've been needing help taking your art to the next level. All right, back to drawing clothes. The next concept that I want to tackle is something that I see most artists struggle with. Perspective. Fold perspective. What? To demonstrate this, it's always easier to start with a cylinder. Whenever you look at a cylinder, unless it's perfectly at eye level, you'll always be looking at it from below or from above. It's super important to be able to tell and to adjust your fold in consequence. In this example, we can easily simplify her sleeves with two big chunky cylinders. And if we observe carefully, you'll see the folds will always follow the surface of the volume they're on. Since this portion of the cylinder curves downwards, then all the folds below will also follow the same logic, the same perspective. If we don't follow that rule and orient the fold in the wrong direction, then the perspective just falls apart and no longer looks like the folds are wrapping around the cylinders. It just looks broken and flat. And that's why I curved this fold here the way that I did, following the same logic. Now in chapter five, we'll look at what makes folds look unnatural and how to prevent it. Very quickly, let's say you have something like this. Technically, the folds are mostly correct, but this looks like crap. The reason has to do with their rhythm. Folds are chaotic, just like nature. When you look at a forest, you see chaos. Nothing is orderly. You don't see trees perfectly aligned in rows. Instead, it looks kind of random. It looks natural. Folds follow the same rule. Always try to make them appear somewhat random in size and in frequency. Whenever you have three or more folds that are identical next to each other, it'll always look a little strange, unnatural. Instead, break their rhythm. Give them different thickness and also space them apart unevenly. Introduce chaos in your folds. It'll look a lot better. Finally, we're at the last one. This chapter has to do with the main difference that you should pay attention to when drawing different types of fabrics. Let's start with thin fabrics versus thick fabrics. Thin fabrics will usually feature very small folds. Think like silk, like tiny ripples in the water. If the folds are smaller, normally you'll also be able to see way more of them a high frequency of folds. And those are probably the hardest to draw. On the flip side though, thick fabrics will feature much larger and much fewer folds. Think of a like a thick sweater, for example. It's a lot easier to rely on the tips that I mentioned today when drawing thicker fabrics. Just keep that in mind. And the next comparison is between soft and stiff fabrics, also resulting in pretty drastically different folds. You can think of stiff fabrics as structurally triangular, like we saw earlier with the jeans. All the folds will have a lot more of a sharp edge to them, while a softer fabric will be a lot more rounded instead. More like soft triangles, I guess, like a croissant. If you were to choose one to study, I would definitely recommend a thicker, stiffer fabrics. Their structure is a lot more simple or predictable than the other variants. With soft fabrics like silk, for example, the structure is a lot more abstract than the other examples that we've seen so far. Meanwhile, stiffer fabrics, and it doesn't even have to be super stiff, but stiffer fabrics create a lot more interesting fold, in my opinion. Certainly easier to draw from imagination. And that is going to be it for this week's class. If you're still here, I'm proud of you. Wow. You get free brushes. I've made one of my two main custom brush sets available for free download with the link in the video description. If you haven't gotten it yet, go ahead and grab it. It even includes my favorite line art brush that I've used for today's drawings. Use them responsibly. They're the best. Oh, and also don't forget to check out my art program before.
What? <laughs>